Okay, so um, we're gonna start. In, okay, we're gonna start now. So, hello everyone. Pedro has a new haircut and looks way different this time. Just meet Cal. Um, yeah. So Pedro is uh, somewhere on a beach, sipping mai tais and relaxing and uh, slacking off. So uh, uh, many of you probably have met Cal. Cal works with Pedro's team on the customer, like technical support side, customer support side, and Cal will be leading the session today. I will be Cal's uh, hands and fingers to type and answer questions. So as we dive in, please pop your questions into the either the Q&A or just throw it in the chat here. Um, so as we're going, if you have questions, just pop it in there and then I can kind of like uh, triage those questions. And then um, we also have some time at the end for Q&A if people want to uh, throw the questions in there. Um, not just on this topic, if you have another topic of something that you're working on at the moment, you just want a quick question at the end, of course you can ask and go from there. So uh, without further ado, Cal, take it away. Perfect. Yeah, so I just had a little uh, PowerPoint uh, set up just to kind of go over what we will be covering um, and what's kind of required of the uh, to complete this whole uh, process of the Google Mesh import and kind of the things you can do to enhance your CM Builder uh, scenario uh, before you start with your simulation. Uh, the first thing. Yep. Can, I, can I cut you off? I could, so just for everyone's benefit, I was talking with uh, Ben from uh, Scander earlier today. Part of the reason we've already covered some of this in a previous like few few workshops ago. The reason we're doing this again is because it's just been such a huge onslaught of interest on um, kind of like on this whole workflow. So lots and lots of customers ask about this and Cal does a lot of his work to, to help customers. He's like, why don't we just make a more dedicated session here that we can record and send to people and stuff like that. So yeah, I just want to throw this become very, very popular. So I highly suggest using this, um, but uh, hopefully after today's session, um, you'll be able to do it much more seamlessly. So sorry, Cal, I, uh, I just had to put that in there. Absolutely. Um, so I just threw a link in the chat actually, which is for our support page, which of course is accessible through the user guide as well. But uh, just for convenience, I threw it in the chat and it's just going to be how to walk through the um, downloading of Blender, uh, which is a free open source uh, animation software, uh, Blossom, which is a free plugin to add to Blender, and then a Google 3D tile API key. And this is something Google's recently released is the API um, for their 3D mesh data. Um, so you can get one of those from Google. It will require you to enter a credit card, but it, they won't charge anything. And it does say that in the uh, description, but just, just be aware. So you're not surprised when you go and sign up for your API key. Um, and yeah, there's the setup link, which I just uh, sent to you guys in the chat. And this is just a really quick uh, schematic drawing or picture of what, what the CM Builder default map, it has like the massings, which represent the buildings, of course. Um, and this is what it would look like with the, the imported uh, surrounding buildings just with a little bit higher resolution. Of course, meshes are still there. There's still a mesh. You can't uh, necessarily uh, sequence them and cut them up like as you would with an architectural model, of course, but it is it adds a lot more context to your surroundings. and It'll help you uh, visualize your construction sequence a lot more. Uh, so then I just basically broke down the steps of how to do it. Um, hopefully we'll be able to make this PowerPoint available to everyone after the fact, or you can just look at this recording as well. Um, and this is just like basically um, the steps into creating that mesh. Uh, 10 steps seems like a lot. A lot of these are just like real quick steps, just ones you can't miss. So I wanted to make sure they were included in the list. Uh, so the first step, of course, is to open your uh, Blender session. And this is what a fresh Blender session looks like. Uh, many of you may already have this or have some experience using Blender. Um, but the first thing you'll want to do is delete uh, some of this uh, stuff default out of here. There's a lighting, uh, there's a cube, uh, there's a little camera angle. And a little bit of background, Blender is like a pretty uh, super powerful animation software, uh, so it can do a whole lot of things. And uh, to to bring in the mesh into CM Builder, we're really just brushing the surface. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of complexity to this software. We will definitely don't need all of it, um, but it's a very powerful program that can be used for a lot of different things as well. Uh, so once you have that Blossom plugin available, you'll be able to see a little Blossom tab on this uh, right side sheet. I can just expand that by opening up that arrow and we can get to the Blossom side tab right here. Uh, we have the whole list of the options. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is select the area of the world we're wanting to import. Um, we can just select uh, select select in the uh, side sheet here and it's going to open up in a web page, which is just going to be a really simple uh, mapping software. And the idea here is it's going to show a rectangle and we can uh, put in or it'll copy the latitude longitude information. Uh, for us. 
Uh, we can use this little search bar here uh, to put in the address, which I have conveniently uh, pasted in a document on my other monitor. Um, so you can put in the address here. Uh, full disclosure, this search bar is not always the best. Uh, so hopefully it'll be able to find your address. If not, you might just have to scroll in manually. Um, but uh, it's neither here nor there. And then you can um, just show your selection rectangle here and basically just resize this to be the exact same size as your CM Builder scenario. So I have my CM Builder scenario here. You just go into 2D and kind of like check out whatever this top corner is, this bottom corner is, and you just drag that selection box uh, to match your CM Builder um, map tile. And if you go a little bit over, it's not a big deal. It's going to import more map data than you need regardless, uh, but you just don't want to be importing a whole ton of unnecessary data or it's just going to slow down the process. Uh, you also can go up into the top right hand corner here uh, to the layers and you can select to go into a street view, uh, whichever you prefer. I won't bother getting uh, too fine detailed with that. I actually already have it in another tab set up and this is the exact uh, latitude longitude. So once I have that set up, I can just easily select copy there and go back to my blender session and just select paste and you'll see all these values will just auto fill with the pasted values. So now there's a few different uh, options we can import. We can one, we can import the open street maps. Uh, we can also import terrain, image overlays, and Google 3D tiles. And that's the one we're going to be doing in this workflow. So we can select the Google 3D tiles. And then we have the level of detail. So we can select what level of detail we want. I would typically recommend doing the buildings with detail, uh, second to the bottom one. Um, there is one more detailed uh, version than that. But the image, at least from my experience, the image actually isn't any nicer. All it does is it will have more vertices in the mesh, which will make it a lot heavier. Um, there's a chance you might be able to ha have a slightly cleaner mesh, but it will take longer to work with. And from my experience, hasn't added that much value. Uh, so my recommendation would just be to go with the buildings uh, with detail. And you can make sure both of those boxes are checked. And then you can press import. I actually won't bother doing that because I've already done it in another tab. And it takes like three to five minutes. It's not crazy long. Uh, but I definitely won't subject everyone in this call to uh, sit watching a Google Maps import take place. Uh, so I've set that up in another tab, uh, which is this one. Uh, so when you first import that data, uh, you're going to be really zoomed in. As I mentioned, it's an animation software. You're meant to be like moving a single person, not uh, half of Chicago. So the, the camera angle is going to be set up for something really small. And the first thing you're going to want to do is like zoom out. And you'll notice right away that there's going to be some pretty weird cropping action going on. And that's that same same thought process. Like it's meant for smaller areas. It's not meant for full, full cities. Uh, to change that, you can just go into the View tab on the right, and you can just change this clipping length uh, ending, and you can just add two zeros. And that's just going to make it uh, the camera focus on a much larger area. You'll also notice right off the bat that there's no texture. It's just a, a gray mesh. Uh, to change that, you can go up into the top right hand corner uh, up here, and there's a few different viewing options. Uh, the one with the uh, little beach ball look, if you select that one, that's going to be with the image texture. So as soon as we select that, we're going to be able to see that image texture coming directly from Google. And as we can see on that cropping region that I had set up uh, in on the map was quite a bit smaller than this. And how the map data is formatted by Google or I think any most mapping softwares that is as well, um, it's going to be broken up into quadrants. So when you set up those latitude longitude, it's going to make sure that everything in that area is included, uh, plus whatever it needs to just based off how it's saved in their database. Uh, so it's always going to be larger than what you actually need, uh, which brings us into the next step, which is going to be cropping this uh, to the correct size. Uh, so the easiest way to do this, there's a lot of a lot of different ways to do this. And if you're familiar with Blender or any animation software, uh, definitely uh, go go whatever route you prefer. Um, but definitely the way I like to do it is to bring in a cube uh, and basically replicate the size of that map tile and then intersect the two. Um, so to do that, we can just go up into the top left hand corner to add, hover over mesh and add a cube. We're gonna see this little dialog box open in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, we could just zoom in on the cube and stretch it and pull it in whatever direction we want to, to make it fit. Uh, or we can just go into the size and manually type in 610 meters which I just know is the uh, medium map map tile size in CM Builder. Uh, they all have a designated size, which you can see when you create them. Uh, so if you want to use a large or extra large map tile, you can do that as well. 
And then as soon as I've selected that, we can see that cubes just turned into uh, 610 meters uh, each way. Um, this, this, this step is completely optional, uh, but you also can make this cube transparent if you're wanting to have a little bit better uh, visualization of what exactly the area is you're trying to crop. Uh, to do that, we have the cube selected, and we can go into the, the beach ball looking button on the bottom right here. Uh, create a new material. Uh, the base color is going to be the color the cube is applied to the cube. So we can just turn the alpha way down, which is uh, the transparency. And then we can um, add the uh, alpha uh, alpha clip, actually, my apologies, uh, alpha clip to these settings here. Again, this that step is, is optional. You don't have to do that. Um, but we can see now the cube is still there, but now it's completely uh, transparent. And to go into edit mode, you can just press uh, tab. Uh, with any object in Blender, uh, when you press tab and go into edit mode, you're going to be able to see the actual vertices. Um, and the edges and be able to edit them. Uh, we can switch between viewing the vertices, uh, edges, and planes up in this top left-hand corner here. And I'll be using that a fair bit throughout this whole process. Um, but for here, just using the, the vertices is fine. Uh, we can then use the actual uh, directions on this compass here to flip into a particular viewing direction, which is very similar to, to Revit, um, if you're familiar with that. Or, or many modeling softwares, actually. Uh, but we can go into the uh, perfectly straight up. We can just do a simple selection trap to grab all of the vertices. Um, shoot. Another button I should mention, actually, is uh, this button I'm hovering over here is going to be the X-ray mode. Uh, so when that button is selected, you'll be able to select through um, or the vertices that are on the other side, uh, not just the first layer. Uh, so to demonstrate that, I don't have X-ray selected now. And if I do the selection trap, and move, I'm only going to be moving the top uh, level of the vertices. So I'll just undo that. Where if I have the X-ray mode on and I do that same selection, I'll be moving the whole cube. Uh, so that's kind of how that works. So you'll just be able to select anything that's behind that first face. So once I have this cube, I can position it into the right location. Um, again, the easiest way to do this is just to have your CM Builder session uh, open in one in one window. Uh, or one monitor and have the uh, Blender session open in the other. Uh, so I'll do that here. I'm just going to have this in plan view, uh, have the Blender session in plan view as well, and just position it according, accordingly. And definitely feel free to throw uh, any questions or anything in the chat. I'm not, I actually got, probably we, we won't the see first. them. Perfect. We got the first question. Got the I know our our so, resident animation expert is uh, in the chat as well, so I think he can probably answer some stuff as well. But um, can you let me know what the file size limitations or guidelines are I should adhere to when using GLB FBX Google content? At what point will it start to bog down CM Builder? So I believe um, so you have you have, I currently have 106 megabytes of GLB. So GLB and FBX perform slightly different. Um, and we would suggest using. Cal, correct me if I'm wrong. GLB we typically would suggest only a, by the way, GLB is kind of like a step stone to our end solution, which everything will be either FBX or other file formats. So it's, it's a bit of a workaround for the terrain editing side of things. Um, Cal, you typically suggest using. FBX at workflow when you bring in surrounding buildings, not GLB, right? Correct. Yeah, FBX is just going to have a nicer color um, color to it. Uh, GLB, I uh, it's all a little bit over my head, but GLB is just going to show up a little bit darker in CM Builder, and I believe that's due to the the textures, um, the image textures. Uh, but FBX is going to have a nicer color, and that's why we recommend FBX. It also has an origin built into the data structure, so you can uh, it has potential to be like geolocated, um, where GLB does not have that. Also, isn't there a heaviness? File. I'm looking at issue. Issue. You could probably un just un, un um, unmute yourself. Issue. Isn't there? Yeah. Doesn't GLB come in heavier? Uh, I do find uh, this file size are much more better with the FBX. Uh, but not the GLB. Okay. Okay. So that's the yeah. first tip, I guess. Um, for for Kyle is that generally the GLBs come in heavier when they're through the conversion process. So that could be part of the process. I don't know at what point. 
if we have a specific like recipe of when performance would get impacted by the size of the files. I know I, I know what it is just holistically in the browser, like you start getting at 1.5 gigs, you know, things start to bog down because the browser can't handle that level. Um, but in terms of bringing in the textured mesh files, I don't off it, 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 it can be kind of a complicated um, calculation of like what's causing it. So I think first thing I would suggest doing, maybe we can jump on a quick call with you either right after this or sometimes like try to get, see if there's a way that we can get you to FBX and to the GLB um, and see if that helps. I think I do know the number of texture files that are mapped to the geometry also has an in impact, right, um, Cal? So like if you have a if you have a lot of textures that are being mapped back to the geometry, yeah. the geometry they're bringing in, that's going to have a performance impact versus having less, um, depending on how you set it up. So yeah. that's something to consider. I personally haven't found the the meshes to be like over the top heavy. Um, I find like you know having furniture in your architectural model has a larger impact than. Um, than than map textures, uh, but I guess it's all case dependent, of course. Um, but I, I I I haven't experienced any really bad performance due to the uh, meshes myself. The GLB is a bit heavier. So suggest, so just for everyone that's on here, when you're doing terrain, like bringing in a surface model from a drone or something like that, and you want to adjust the terrain, you got to go the GLB path at the moment. Yeah. Um, and if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, we're helping. Just reach out to us. We're happy to help you do that. Cal does that a lot. Um, but in terms of the surrounding building workflow, just improving the surroundings, we suggest this workflow and, and going to FBX whenever possible. Go ahead. Sorry. So, so I've just made the cube um, opaque once again, just so that uh, we can all see what we're doing. We don't. It has no effect uh, other than the visualization. Um, but yeah, we can see the cube is now uh, covering everything we want, and it's nicer to have it a significantly higher and lower than the map. It's just going to make the cutting process a little bit cleaner. Um, but once we have that cube in place, uh, we can now go back to selecting that uh, mesh and the, the maps mesh. And we go down to the little wrench here, uh, which is called the modifiers tab. Uh, so under the modifiers tab, we can add a modifier and we can add a, a Boolean operation. And Boolean just means you're taking volumes and adding or subtracting or intersecting them. Um, so yeah, we can use Boolean. And then we want to select intersect, which is going to be an operation which is just going to uh, trim the mesh to only include what is inside of this cube. And you also want to make sure you go too fast on the solver. Um, again, I think that has, again, to do just with the size of the data we're working with. Um, but also, if you do exact, it's going to take a long time and you'll get actually a lot worse results. Uh, so definitely go to fast uh, first. And then under object, you can just select cube. This should be the only thing in your list, unless you've added a bunch more stuff to your uh, Blender session. But we can do that. And it's just going to really quickly crop that map to the exact size. Uh, so it hasn't actually been applied yet. This is just a preview what we're looking at now. Uh, so to apply it, we can just select this little down arrow and apply. And it's easy as that. So once it's been cut, uh, we could just hide the cube. I generally just delete it. Um, you you won't need it again, and they're easy enough to make, uh, even if you did. So I typically just delete it, keep my session a little bit cleaner, and we now have this uh, map surrounding mesh uh, completely separated. Oh, sorry, just cleared my throat there. Um, <laughs> uh, the next kind of workflow we're going to want to do is to separate the ground from the surrounding buildings. And the reason we want to do that is, as, as we were just kind of discussing, is you're going to want to bring the ground in as a GLB so you can create a custom terrain uh, using that GLB. And that way, all the bottoms of the buildings will line up perfectly. Um, our satellite data is from Mapbox. And this, of course, is from Google. Uh, they're going to be close. Of course, it's, it is a, a real portion of the ground, so they'll be relatively accurate in both. Um, but just with the difference between the two, of maybe a foot or something, some of the bottoms of the buildings won't line up perfectly. So that's the reason why you want to use the map surface from Google if you're using the surrounding buildings from Google. Uh, the easiest way to uh, remove the ground, um, and this is going to vary a lot between different projects like forests, uh, like forests or trees react very differently um, in Blender than, than buildings do. Uh, but this is a couple strategies you can use to, to go about doing this. Um, the first step, is if we take this uh, split mesh, I've been going to tab. Oh, actually, I'll just clean up some of these vertices first. Um, these vertices are often just left after the 
um, the the modifier operation, the intersect. Uh, so we can just really quickly do a selection trap and delete all those floating vertices. So now, now that we have this in edit mode, what we can do is we can go straight to the underside of it. So if we select the negative Z, we're looking straight up at the mesh. And we can then turn off X-ray mode so that all we select is the first visible thing. And then we can, in the top left, go to uh, planes. So all we're now looking at is the first visible face when we're looking up at the model from underneath. So we can just do a simple selection trap once again. And then if we go up to the upper view, we can see exactly what we've selected. So it's going to be all, almost all of the ground uh, underside of some of the buildings. Um, and yeah, this, this one does work quite well. Uh, sometimes you'll end up getting the roofs. So if the, if the building mesh is hollow, uh, you'll actually select, select the roof of the building as well. Uh, but we can work with that as well. Uh, so once we've selected that um, horizontal surface, uh, we can just right select or right click the mouse button and separate uh, selection. So now we've really quickly uh, have a like quick and dirty version of the, the map and the surrounding buildings, which are uh, now separate meshes. The map isn't super clean as I um, alluded to. So if we go into tab and we can select vertices, we can see there's still quite a lot of stuff above and below. Uh, so now we can go into a side view and we can further separate this down. Again, this is a nice, relatively easy version because it is a nice horizontal ground. Uh, if it's a sloped site, it might take a, a little bit more finesse, but this one's nice and quick and easy. So we can just do a selection trap and a selection trap here to grab all of those building um, basements. Oh, sorry, I didn't turn X-ray back on. So definitely a good a good note is to turn X-ray back on uh, once you've done that first first step. Uh, but we can grab the the loose vertices from roofs and from basements and doing the exact same workflow uh, right click separate a uh, selection so we could just delete those ones we've just separated or the other option is we can just add them back to the buildings and this is basically the process of just continuing to grab uh, meshes and either adding it to the building file or to the um, ground file so I'll just select both of those meshes, I right click and join. Perfect. Again, I won't get uh, too detail oriented on, on this just in the interest of time, uh, but if you do want, you can always go in and uh, delete some of the extra trees or the map is split up into quadrants. So it's gonna have these little lines uh, every so often, you just split it up into quadrants. You can clean it up as much or as little as you want, of course. Um, to do that, you just go into any view, selection trap, and delete vertices. Another good trick is if you hold control and then the right mouse button, you can do a custom lasso. So then you can have a little bit more control of um, selecting out some of these vertices you want to delete. Perfect. Awesome. So now the next step we want to do is we want to export that terrain, uh, as I mentioned, as a GLB, so we can create a custom terrain and scene builder for it. Uh, so we can just make that the only visible thing on the screen. On the screen, and we go up into File, uh, Export, uh, GLB, and we can save it wherever. I already have one called uh, Top. I'll save this to my desktop. I'm um, Topo. And if we expand the include menu, uh, we can only export visible objects, which is just, as the name suggests, just going to export that map surface. And then transform, I always want to make sure we unselect Y is up. That way Z is up, which is going to be consistent with all uh, modeling softwares in the construction industry anyways. Uh, so then we can export uh, topo. And once it's been exported, essentially we can just forget about it. We don't really want to work with this ground mesh because uh, it's it's hard to work or hard, if not impossible, to work with in CN Builder. Uh, so we just want to create our own custom terrain using that. So now we have the buildings. There's a lot of different options we can do with this. If we if you do want to, if it's a Reno project or something, uh, we can get really really crazy and customize. And we could maybe just like remove an air handling unit so that we could simulate that being removed in the simulation. 
Um, for this, I'm just going to actually take a building and separate it out in the mesh so that we can uh, simulate having a demolition building, de oof, <laughs> a demolished building. There we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select that mesh, press tab to go into edit mode, and that same strategy I just had mentioned, uh, hold the control and the right mouse button, and then I'm just going to really quickly trace around this one old looking building in, in downtown Chicago. Perfect. And of course, you don't have to do this in, in one step. You can you can separate these meshes and rejoin them as many times as you want. Uh, so lots of different strategies to go about doing this. Um, another what good method. The, you, what, 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 what would be the pros and cons of doing it all at once or doing it separately? Is it just like a level of detail or? Exactly. Yeah, the level of detail. And as I said, this is a fairly clean um, mesh, but sometimes you're going to have like parked cars and stuff on the side. Uh, so you might just want to go and delete uh, individual parked cars or pull them out in different sections. Um, another good strategy that Pedro uses actually is to bring in another cube and to use an intersect operation. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of different ways to work with these meshes, and there's also a ton of um, available information on Blender on YouTube. Uh, so I definitely encourage anyone to, to look look up the best way to do things. Uh, this is just some strategies that work for me and I think should uh, work for most people. Uh, but once I've separated out or selected those vertices, again, I can just right click and uh, separate selection. Perfect. So now we've got our mesh pretty much to export ready. Now there's a few steps we have to do to make the uh, images stick to that geometry. So as I showed earlier, if you go into uh, the mesh format, or this is the one I was looking for, um, it's it's just like a pretty basic geometry, and these are just images that are pasted onto these surfaces. I'll show you really quick what it actually looks like in the image side, uh, just for more just a laugh than anything else, because it's a bit um, ridiculous, I'd say. It's just these massive images. Uh, so this is what the image files are like that are actually pasted on these geometries. Uh, so long story short, it's pretty easy for the computer to, to lose what image is pasted on which piece of geometry. And that's what these next couple steps are to do, is just to really like stabilize those images that are pasted onto the geometry. Uh, so the first step is if we grab the mesh in question and we go into uh, the Blossom tab again, and we can replace materials. It's going to make it a little bit darker in the viewer. I'm still going to, or yeah, it looks good in scene builder after that, uh, but it just is going to replace the image texture. And then just to make sure that it's actually stuck to the right place, um, we just have to uh, separate the image uh, from the mesh and then rejoin it to the, to the mesh. And how we do that is we can select the mesh, go up to file, uh, external data, and unpack resource. Uh, we can unpack it to wherever, it doesn't uh, really matter, but I always use the first option to just unpack to uh, the default uh, folder. That might just take just a minute. Well, that was pretty quick. And then the same thing, now we have to go file, uh, external data, and pack resources. And so again, that just separated the image from the Blender file and then reattached it, and it's just going to make it a bit more stable uh, when working with. And then the very last step uh, to do before exporting is to um, go into tab. So once we've uh, separated and rejoined those image textures, uh, we can edit the file, I uh, select tab, I uh, select everything in the viewer, and then right click, uh, separate by material. And that's again, just like the very last step of this process. That might just take just a minute but we can kind of get back into uh, the map while it thinks about how to separate those up. And we can now bring in the custom topography that we've already exported. Uh, so in this new uh, terrain, we can go into the buildings, uh, go into imported mesh and browse uh, or upload file, sorry. And we just grab that uh, topo file. Again, this isn't completely necessary, especially if you do have a flat site. Um, I would probably even just recommend skipping this, bringing in the 
the surrounding buildings, seeing how it looks, and then and then gauging whether or not you actually do need to do this in your particular instance. But we can see we brought in the the mesh here, and it's actually a good example of it, how it does show up darker. Uh, it's still visible the texture, but it is quite a bit darker than than the FBX will show up when you'll see that. And we can just line this up with the correct location. Um, of course, you can get a lot more accurate with this. I won't get too crazy at the moment, um, but you can use some of the uh, images that are actually on the mesh um, or some of the buildings and line that up uh, accurately. So once I've got that mesh uh, located in the correct location, I can now create a custom terrain using that mesh. And to do that, I'll just go back into project setup on my home page, a custom terrain, and then I can create a terrain using a mesh. Again, this is the exact same process you would use if you had a, a custom terrain coming from Revit or from uh, Civil 3D uh, or a drone scan, whatever it might be. Um, and we can just go select topo and load. There's also the blending mode, which is just going to be uh, how where there is mesh data present uh, versus where there isn't. It's going to be how dramatically uh, the the map um, changes to meet those requirements. Uh, so typically, I would recommend going at about 50 percent. Uh, you can play around with it. There's no harm in just regenerating it to see what works best for your situation. Uh, but if there's a lot of like retaining walls or very, very steep like cliffs, uh, shorter smoothing distance, uh, where if you have just a few points with lots of big gaps, um, um, larger smoothing distance will give you a, a cleaner looking result. So I'll save that and while that generates, we can go back to Blender. Perfect. So we can see now it's been split up into uh, materials. So we can select on any of these and just see exactly what was uh, that material. And that's just the very last step you want to do before you export. So now we have all that, we can just go into uh, File, Export, and FBX. Uh, there's a few different, a few little selections we have to do uh, before exporting the FBX. And again, all of these steps are in the, the document. Um, there's just a lot of little boxes to check and whatnot. Uh, so definitely would recommend the first time you go through is just having that document open on one side and making sure you have all the right boxes checked. Um, and also, we're always happy to hop on a call and assist as well. Uh, but up in the top, you can go path mode. You want to select copy, and then you want to select this little icon right beside it. Uh, you want to export only the visible objects, and you want to make sure uh, that uh, that Y is forward. So Z is up. And then we can export that as ground view buildings. Perfect. And that should be pretty quick. Awesome. So we can see now our custom terrain has been completed while we were just in Blender there. Um, so we can toggle between the two. Again, this is quite a flat site, so there wasn't a whole lot of difference between the two anyways. But that is. You, so the, Cal, can I cut you off? Can I cut you off? Yeah. So a lot of, we get lots of questions about the custom terrain. So I'm not sure if it was clear for everyone, but just maybe to go a little slower, maybe you can almost hide the surrounding buildings real quick and just quickly check which buttons did you click just to double click on the steps to update the custom terrain. <laughs> we get a lot of questions yeah. about that. Go yeah, ahead. absolutely. Yeah, so when you bring in a mesh, um, you can do this either with points or with with meshes, uh, but the mesh would be, as I mentioned, for for drone. If you have a drone uh, mesh, uh, or if you have a topographic surface in a Revit model, um, or this use case, you can bring in the mesh, position it, uh, and you just have to position that with the compass. GLB, as I mentioned, isn't currently uh, able to handle a project coordinate system, uh, but that's why we're looking into allowing FBX for custom trains, or we're implementing that actually, uh, but I currently will just have to position it uh, using references on the actual mesh itself. And then you so, can go so into your question. So it was, it was project setup. Yeah. Import custom train import. Oh, you import the mesh first. Sorry. So yeah. first first is buildings. Import yeah. mesh. That's really important because it's I know it's complicated how we separate the GLB thing. So 
anything that you need to be instanced as well, you can bring in as a mesh. So if you want to move thing like a steel member around or something. But anyways, so you go first imp import the mesh, then yeah. go to project setup, custom terrain, and you can reference that mesh for the thing. Okay, just want to, exactly. I'm going slow here because we get a lot of questions about this. So um, thank you. And yeah, you can create a custom train either using points or meshes. Uh, but yeah, if you create a custom train using a mesh, you can then select your mesh from this list. Of course, there's only the one in this case, but you might have multiple. Um, and then yeah, you can just choose the the smoothing distance you want to to incorporate. And then once we've incorporated that, we'll have our new terrain. Of course, I could have renamed it if I wanted. Um, and the default map, and kind of switch between them as we want. A fun fact or uh, interesting fact is once we've generated that terrain, we actually can delete this mesh, which is what I generally do um, because I'm not going to use it in the simulation uh, for any reason. And it just takes up a little bit of data space. Uh, so once I've created that custom terrain, I'm simply just going to delete that mesh. So now that we have that all set up, we can now bring in the surrounding buildings we've exported as an FBX. I uh, can go back to our main page and go down to the bottom dock. Uh, to buildings, imported model, and uh, upload file. So we have our uh, surrounding buildings and then that uh, demolished building that we've separated as well. I uh, actually didn't export that demo building. This is from from before, before the meeting, uh, full disclosure. But, but yeah, you just have to export both of those as separate files. Um, and then we'll just have to load those, which will just take couple minutes. It is it is pretty quick. And this is a good indication now there's that question about what the file size and and effect on performance is. And just the upload process is is quite quick. Uh, so I think that's a good indication of of the amount of memory and storage it uses. Let's see these guys up top. And so I'm not 100 percent sure why this happens. So I'd love to hear some feedback once someone has figured it out. Uh, but whether you have when you export um, y as forward or negative y as forward, it doesn't seem to to work half the time, anyways. Uh, so, it's all, when you have the z up, it's always going to be oriented correctly in the z direction. But half the time, it comes in the correct direction, and half the time, you'll have to rotate it 180 degrees. Uh, so, just as a heads up, let's be processing. Another step I'll uh, I'll mention, and we'll cover this a little bit more in detail after, is just the actual satellite view itself um, is from uh, Mapbox and CM Builder by default. And sometimes the, the resolution is better in Mapbox, sometimes it's better in Google Maps, uh, but the colors are always going to match better um, to the, the mesh, uh, the Google mesh, if you have a Google satellite view. So something I typically like to do is to replace the satellite view uh, with the Google satellite view uh, in a city environment, it doesn't really make that much difference, but especially if it's like a more of a greenfield project or a bit more rural, and there's a lot of lawns, like the Google street maps might be in the spring and the um, open maps might be in the fall. So it might be a yellow versus a green grass. Uh, so that can have a little bit of effect on the aesthetics. So we'll jump into exporting an image after that, after this. Yeah, actually, I, I just looked in the logs. There's a, there's like a big onslaught of, of, uh, you, there's a bit of a queue, so you're in the queue. Might take. Do you have it um, elsewhere yeah. while we wait? I do. Yeah. So this is the the final result. As soon as it's imported, it's going to look just like this. Um, oh well, it might be 180 degrees off, but we'll cover that in a minute. Um, but yeah, you can position it just like you would any other model. And then with the. Do you want to just show uh, that real quick? But the yeah, yeah absolutely. Show how it, yeah. yeah. So if we just right click on the model, um, right click, uh, we can move. And then we can just use the compass, of course, uh, to move it to wherever we like and rotate it as well. So if you hold shift, it's going to jump in 45 degree increments. And as I said, it's always going to be, or at least from my experience, it's always been 180 degrees off or correct. Uh, so you can just spin it exactly 180 by holding the shift and doing that that way. Undo all those translations. For the, for the FBX, for those FBX, if you do have a, a court like, um... If you know the coordinate system you're trying to snap it to, can you enter the coordinate system there when you hit move as well? Uh, yes, you can. You, you can ever snap do it that way? Project origin. Um, I don't know if the Google Mesh data is geolocated. 
or probably is. I don't know how it's geo located, so I haven't done it personally. I'd be curious to see if anyone else has done that. Uh, but yeah, for like imported models, you can you can geolocate them, um, but only if you know the project base point, which I I don't with the Google data. Um, but yeah, anyhow, so now this is the the demo building that I've separated out. Uh, so we now have the imported models, and we can just hide and show this demo building and and assign it to milestones. So I've already created this uh, demo milestone where I've hidden that demolition building. And because this is actually all custom terrain rather than a mesh terrain, we can still work with this and create excavation operations, place fences, and all that good stuff. Uh, so I'll really quickly, I'm not going to get too detail oriented about this because it's not the point, but I'll um, kind of create a real quick excavation to show that that does in fact work. Go three meters. Perfect. And we can see that there is still some mesh data that wasn't trimmed out, and that's just going quickly. Uh, but yeah, so we can now still create excavation operations. Uh, so we'll have that 3D mesh file uh, for the existing conditions and then uh, the demolition. And then to get back to replacing the map surface. So again, this is the imported image. So we can just see the difference. Uh, this is like nice light green to match the correct season, where if we uh, hide this for a little bit, uh, do, do, do. we can see that, I guess this was just in a different season. So the lawn of this field is uh, brown. So something like that. They're both good quality images, but that is the reason um, for doing that. And to import the image from Google uh, Earth, we can pull up Google Earth Pro. You also could just, Again, we could use a ortho mosaic image from from a drone if we have access to that, or use any other mapping service um, to to bring in whatever image you have. It's the highest quality and the best colors. Uh, I'm going to use Google Earth Pro for this, uh, and I can just bring this to the correct uh, location and size. We can see here's the field up here, and we first search in the address. It's going to that's not the correct correct address. Uh, it's going to show up with a big pin. Uh, you can just X out of the search to remove that pin. And you also have the layers. So we have options. If we want to show the road names, uh, we can do that. Uh, we can add in some other uh, interesting information and play around with that to see what image we like the best. And then we can just size the map tile onto the screen approximately. Again, you don't have to get too worked up. There's just no point in bringing in uh, extra data you don't need. So you want to size it uh, roughly to what your scene builder map tile is. And then go to view in the top left, uh, reset, tilt and compass. That's going to bring you to a perfect bird's eye view. And then the third button here is going to be export image. Uh, we can set the resolution to maximum and then just save image. Another thing about, about the street names, just um, not everyone knows about that. You can use the, the labels, the 3D labels that are with a transparent background to put the street names on the mesh as well. Yeah. So we see that a lot. So if you want to bring it in and you want to define like North State Street and this street and that street, you could just use the 3D labels on top of the mesh, which looks pretty good with a transparent background. So now tip no. and trick there. Well, let's delete this one that I already have in here. And then I'll just replace in this drawing overlay to, to walk everyone through the process as well. I would just go into project setup, uh, drawing overlay, and again, this is the exact same process for an architectural floor plan or a civil plan or, or any other imagery. I'm going to upload file, uh, grab satellite. And the best way to place them is to use two point positioning. Uh, you can use the, the single uh, length uh, positioning as well or scale to distance, um, but two point positioning is just going to be the easiest, fastest way to do it. Uh, so you can select that and it's going to prompt you to select two points on the image and then two points on the map. Uh, when doing this, it's important to select two points that are actually on the ground rather than the top of the building. And that's just because there could be some offset based off the exact angle of the satellite um, between the top corner and the bottom corner of the building. And the other thing to keep in mind is just you want those points to be relatively far apart because uh, you're going to be a couple inches off regardless when you when you click. Um, but a couple inches over 100 feet doesn't really matter. 
or shouldn't matter. Uh, a couple inches over one feet is proportionally going to be a much larger deal. So I'm just going to be really quick and dirty with that. And we can see exactly what the impact is with that new imagery. So once I've confirmed, I can bring that opacity up to 100% and project on terrain. Perfect. I think that's uh, all I've got. Any uh, any questions on, on what we've covered so far? Yeah, you can just throw your questions in the chat or in the Q&A and we can take them from there. I also wanted to mention that I am going to take the last few minutes, if we have it, to show you the product roadmap as well and just kind of go through a few things that we're working on. Um, and, and I'll share it with you so you can provide feedback. Thanks. All right, thank you very much. One, oh, one note I should say for everyone. We understand this like is an external workflow to CM Builder to bring this data in. Um, it's early days yet, but our, our medium term goal would be to not have to do this, <laughs> would be to upgrade our map service and to be, provide more functionality inside CM Builder to get textured meshes in here automatically as opposed to having to deal with this externally. There's some technical um, challenges we got to work through to make that happen, but I want you to know that we are working on that. So that you don't have to, you know, jump through these hoops to upgrade the, the surrounding buildings. But at the moment, this is the the best way to do it. And um, and once you get the hang of it, it, it's you know, thank you, Cal, for going in detail. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, any other questions from the team? Okay, Ben, when you guys eventually have mesh model trimming to similar, will that apply? Yes. So when we uh, when, when as part of our delete element. Um, uh, or sorry, split. So we already have delete, but we have we need split. So split um, for those who don't know is like the ability to any imported model to be able to just you know you know say a, a concrete core, be able to split the mesh by floor. So yes, split uh, mesh will, will also apply to the imported meshes as well. I talked to Shane, our product manager, about that. Okay, Kevin, Cal, he says uh, when you separate the buildings from the train, can you join them back together? again in blender uh yes yeah you can if you just uh select two meshes and then right click in the viewer uh, you can add any elements back together or separate them uh, however you want yeah. yeah you can like all of the vertices unless you actually delete them all of those vertices all the image files are all still in blender uh, so it's just a matter of uh, grouping them however you like um to be sequenced in CM Builder. So again, if you were wanting to move, I'll use that air handling unit, uh, for example, again, if you want to just remove an air handling unit and export that as a separate mesh, you can still snap it into the correct location. And that way it can just easily be sequenced in CM Builder to add or remove that, that air handling unit at a particular milestone. Highly, you actually can comment on those things. So you can, you can actually say, hey, this is important or not important, or you can add new things. Um, we do take that feedback very seriously. Um, so that 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 feedback goes directly to our product team. We have like feature sets that are linked to customers who have asked for it, comments they've asked for it in the back end. And then what we try to do as best we can when we're back when we're grooming the backlog is saying, okay, here's the most popular features people are asking for, right? So um, it's not a perfect science, but we're we are we do take the feedback very seriously. So thank you very much for uh, any contributions that you'd be willing to make. Okay, I think. What we'll do is we'll just we'll just hey we're we're we've given you six six minutes back, so <laughs> we'll hang tight here. If anyone um, would like to set up a, a more personalized session, just let us know, and uh, and we're happy to do that. You can just go up to the help section at the top of the product and say book a support session uh, directly on our calendar. And um, but hopefully this is helpful in terms of uh, getting yeah. So we'll we'll send Kyle. We'll send this out to you, everyone that signed up. Um, we had about 100 people sign up, but, or just under that, but not everyone showed up. Um, so we'll be sending that, and then yeah, we'll we'll send the PowerPoint as well. Um, I think that's no issue, right, Cal? We should be able to send the the deck, yeah. yeah. And we'll send that to you, Kyle. And then if you again, if you run into any issues, just let us know. Happy holidays to everyone. Hope you guys have a great uh, break with your your loved ones, and uh, excited for 2024.